We all know that I'm not good at faces and skin tones. It's something I need to learn. And as we go, I know I'll get better, but there must be an easier way to do this. A much easier way. I'm gonna try and figure it out. In the meantime, what can we do today? Oh, I'll fix this spear for a start. And this spear, it ain't gonna fly straight. I did have a go at another model the other night, this guy, and then decided he looked better with a beard. But the skin tone's still splotchy. Hmm. So you have a variety of colors. I have this bronze flesh tone. I've not really used that much. Bone white I mix with everything. Bit of brown can darken a skin tone. Peachy flesh speed paint. I've not been brave enough to use this on its own. Ooh. Leg skin. Could be something in that. Let me see. Could always mix in some brown paint. Ooh, look at this guy. Now he could be good for that plague skin. I think he's got tree roots for feet. I like him. Let's give him a go. So we're going to try with some plague skin for a start and give his top half essentially a base coat. So let's get to it. Okay, look at him. It's looking very green. Hmm. There's paint inside his mouth. Oh no, made a mistake, tidied that up a bit. Oh yes. It's looking a bit um, entertaining at the minute. Sorry, I love those feet. True. Let's um, dry brush some elf green on him, see if we can make him look a little bit darker than he currently does. Sorry, I was just adjusting my stool then. <laughs> Apologies if you heard that. Okay, so yeah, we'll try and um, tone down this skin a bit because he's very bright. He looks like he looks like he'd be a little bit dirty, to be fair. Oh, now to focus for a minute then. It's not good. Okay, so that's that's dirtied him up a little bit. It's good. Okay, so we're gonna do the scary thing. We're gonna do some eyes, and we're gonna break out the insane detail brush to give him some pupils. Oh, oh, be careful, be careful. The problem with this brush is the paint dries so fast on it. So it takes so many attempts just to get that dot on there. And obviously if I water it down too much, it's going to cause more of an issue in the fact that I have to keep touching it up. So keep trying, keep trying. Go on, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, oh no. Well, he doesn't look very scary, I can tell you that much. Kind of, well, I'll let you guys see for yourself. He's a friendly zombie. He's scaring no one. Okay, bit of slaughter red. Let's try adding a little bit of red to, oh no, this is not going well. Oh no, take the brush away from me. No, wiping it's not working. Don't put more on. What are you doing? No. Oh no. Now I've made a mess. I better go fix this. Uh, that did not work. <laughs> so as you can see, I have a lot of fun with faces. It is. I don't find, I, I find it a little bit frustrating, but at the same time, it's all part of the learning. And one of the things, I mean, I am working on the very small miniatures, so it is gonna be a lot more difficult. And then one thing I hope to do when I get home is work on some larger miniatures, start working on these skills on a larger scale and see if they'll work. Now my way of fixing this was to put the plague skin tone all over it and hope that that kind of covered up some of my messes. So I have like a, a plague shader, so that's what I put it on there. And then I pull it in his pants and started on the tree boots because ideally we're more focusing on those skin tones. Oh, I'm going to get some brown in there and some satchel brown. So these were what I used on the tree boots and then I put a deep shader over the bottom of them as well. The pants I've done in a blue and I've also used some of the deep shader over that to try and dirty them up a little bit as well. And that's not looking too bad. On the top half, I used a combination of the plague shader and the deep shader 
on all his kind of his fun guy and his pustules and all of that to try and get them to stand out a little bit more and look just a little bit more nasty. And then, so that worked quite well. I enjoyed doing that. I think they're starting to stand out a little bit more. But one thing that we need to do at the minute is we need to let this guy dry. So let's let him dry. And then we'll start on highlighting some of that fun guy. So I'm going to start with the pink. And to get the pink, I have to mix the red and the white. Okay, and it's given us kind of like a pinky, fleshy colour. We've we'll moved to my highlighting brush now, as you can see. Don't oh, get a bit of tissue, get rid of some excess water off the brush. Okay. And these, he is absolutely covered in fungi, by the way. And as I will cut through a lot of this, but as you can see, I'm just going to go along and just try and highlight them, get the edges to stand out some more, give them a little bit of colour, because I don't want it to be all one colour. You know, we, we really need to make these things stand out a little bit. And that's so, I'm going to start with that. Now, I will point out that this is one of many, many, many various coats that I actually put on these fungi to kind of get them to where I want. My problem with painting right now is I don't know when to stop. And that's so I'll keep going and I'll keep going and I'll keep going. If I make a mistake, then I try and correct it straight away. So a lot of the time I'll use a clean brush, dipped in water, remove the excess, and then I'll agitate the paint so that I can pull it back off again. As long as it's not dried fully, this seems to be working really well for me, which is why, as with this guy, I did the eyes about six times before we got to the cut that you saw here. And that because I was able to keep removing the paint so that I can still, you know, retain a little bit of that definition in there. These models, he is one of the most detailed models, to be fair, out of this pack. And this pack was the selection of 20 I got that I told you about in the first video. Um, I'll put a link in the description to them if you want to go check them out for yourself. I think they're really good for practicing on and messing around with. But as I say, a lot of the models don't have very defined details on them. So it's a case of playing around with them and seeing where you go. Just be aware that anyone with a weapon, the weapon's not going to be straight. Okay, it's, um, yeah, it's an issue. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're still going around and we're just working on all of that fungi, just highlighting it, making it stand out a little bit. I say highlighting, this isn't highlighting, we're just painting it another colour, okay? I'll use the proper terminology for it. So, pop them down, we're going to use some yellow and then water this down a little bit. And then we're going to, again, go over and we're just going to do the tops of these mushrooms over here. And as I go through this, you'll notice and that my brush jumps, I kind of knock the tips of some of the little fungi stalks on his head. There you go. And try to wipe it off, get rid of the excess at least. But one thing you will notice from there is, I kind of take that and I'm like, do you know what, I actually kind of like that, that little bit of yellow on the top. So when I finish the mushrooms, and that I start kind of looking at working my way around and using that yellow afterwards to highlight a little bit more. I'm going to get some green now because the stalks of the big mushrooms, I'm like, I want to put a more, a darker kind of green on there. But when I first start putting it on, it, it just wasn't dark enough. It was still very light. So you'll see us grab a darker green at this point and we'll make a little mix. So there's our darker green. And we're just going to mix up a little bit of this and use this for the stalks. I'm still learning to mix, okay? <laughs> it takes a little bit of time. Okay, so put that on there and I'm looking at it and I'm like, no, I'm gonna use that yellow. So this is just where I basically mix some of that yellow 
with some of the light green and I'm just now adding that to the fungi and the pustules as well because my aim is to make this guy look as gross as possible so that's what we're working on and I think this this exercise has been quite good for me so far because it's enabled me to kind of experiment a little bit more be a little bit less afraid because it's a zombie it's, he's not supposed to look clean, neat and tidy. He's supposed to look messy. So it's enabled me to kind of let go of perfect skin tones and perfect features and just have a little bit more fun with it. And I did really enjoy this guy. And uh, um, it's currently, as I'm recording this voiceover, it's currently Sunday morning where I am. And I painted this guy and did the recording of the footage yesterday. And then, so this, this has been my little weekend project. And that, but yeah, I think he's looking fairly good. And that will carry on highlighting the fungi. And that, having fun with him. That's the main thing. Let's turn him around to get the ones on the back. I still love those tree root fruit. And one of the things I've noticed in that with these paints is even when they dry, they are quite, they do have a bit of a sheen to it. They are fairly reflective. <clears throat> so one of the things I think I'd like to kind of look into when I get back is, you know, whether or not there's a way that I can make these finishes look a little bit more matte. Now, obviously when I've got access to materials that are gonna help me be able to do that. But at the minute, it's fine for practicing. And, you know, maybe this zombie lives in the UK where it rains continuously. So really, it's just raining and he's just drenched. Really, he's not going after people. He's just looking for an umbrella. Okay, now, excuse my hand being in the way while I do that. But so the way I've got my camera set up at the minute is I've got um, like a little tiny tripod phone holder type thing and that is what my phone set up when I've done recording so it's been interesting trying to reach around trying to provide enough support for you know my arms my elbows all of that kind of thing to paint and to be able to show you guys what I'm doing at the same time it, it's it's an interesting setup and the, not one that I'd recommend. I did consider putting the camera off to the side, but then it just gives you really weird angles. So I still need to work on that one. Okay. So he does have a little bit of a belt with his jeans. So I'm just adding some extra color to that. And then I'm going back in with the flake shader because I don't think he looks, you know, manky enough yet. We need to up the mankiness. <laughs> No, nope, quick tidy up there. So let's get back in there with those shades. I'm just wiping the excess water off my brush again before I go in to grab it. And we're just, we're mainly doing it around the fungi and the top half for this one. And that, um, just, just to see if we can get a little bit more definition. And it's, it's a very subtle effect, but I like it. I think he's looking good. It's looking good for me. Oh no. So I've got one fluorescent paint with me and it's purple. And I had this idea, you know, let's get some of this fluorescent paint. Those mushrooms on his shoulder, they need a bit of patterning, you know? Let's do it. So I get my brush, I get my fluorescent, and obviously I didn't tidy up well enough. But you know, then I go in and I try and do kind of like a dotty appearance on the top of the mushroom. And well, as you'll see in a minute, I quickly realized that I don't like the dotty effect. But overall, what I do to it, I think turns out okay in the end. And this is all about learning and experimenting. So, yeah, there you go, don't like it. I'm just gonna make the whole thing purple on top. Now these paints are actually quite translucent. They're not very opaque. So you can almost use them um, to provide a little bit of extra kind of color or definition or highlight to something. I don't have a UV light to try them out. Okay, so 
you know, the colors are vibrant, the pigments are vibrant in them, but I can't test the glue. So when I get back from work and then when I'm on my break, I shall be getting out the old UV flashlight and lamp and testing it out. We'll see, see how it looks. Okay, adding a bit more shaders on in a bit of the green paint as well. And then let's dirty him up a little bit more on his pants because they were looking still a bit too blue. And there you go, you can see my finished guy. I did paint the base at the bottom and I, these will get proper bases, okay? But yeah, we've got this. And let me know what you think in the comments, you know? I think he's looking pretty cool. And that, but yeah, we'll get proper bases. But here he is. Say hi.